Welcome back. And joining us for a look at the day's market action is Wayne McCurry from uh, FNB Wealth and Investments. Thank you so much for your time, Wayne. Wayne, let's actually start off with that uh, that inflation print from the U.S. from December. Yes. Markets had been eagerly awaiting that, and it came out actually hotter than expected. Markets had expected 3.2 percent came out at 3.4 percent. What what do you make of that? Well, look, it's obviously not good news. It's not that dramatic. I mean, it's not as though it shot up a percent higher than was expected. And certainly core inflation was also a little bit higher, but not that much. And then month on month inflation was 0.3 percent instead of the expected 0.2. Mm. And I suppose we can judge by what that did to our market. Mm. You know, there were a couple of spikes here and there, but more or less the RAND stayed where it is and our market, even though it's not as strong as what it was earlier on today, is still positive. Of course, the markets aren't closed yet, mm. but it seems to have had a muted effect on markets. I was hoping for a good number mm -hmm. and clearly it wasn't that, but it also it's not catastrophic, I wouldn't think. Yeah. Well, I mean, Wayne, we, uh, you know, did have a rebound before that U.S. inflation print in the markets. Yes. Of course, uh, we're still waiting to see how the U.S. markets are closed today, how they really, um, uh, how they react to investor sentiment as <clears throat> investors sift through that print. But I mean, you know, the bull run that we had at the end of 2023 did sour this year. And I'm just wondering if maybe markets for the large part this year have taken a breather because maybe um, that rally sh overshot the fundamentals yeah look i think that that's probably the case as to why we've seen weakness since the literally the first trading day of this year when you look back you know the two-month return on mining shares was almost 20 percent uh, companies like anglo-american platinum which we'll talk about later again mm -hmm. was up 40 50 odd percent if i remember correctly mm. so there was a tremendous run on all markets not just our markets overseas as well and whenever you get these exceptionally good month or two returns, you know, you do normally get some weakness after that. But, you know, markets certainly in South Africa are still quite cheap. And with this bit of weakness now, you know, if you believe the thesis that interest rates will fall and we'll see some recovery in the commodity cycle, then, you know, it, it, like, lucky enough, maybe gives us another buying opportunity, this bit of weakness now, because the market's given back more or less half of the run it saw mm. in December. So the market's down about 4%. Mm. Well, Wayne, um, talking about commodities, Teresa came out with a production report. We don't I have to go in-depth into that, as I did talk to an analyst earlier on on that specific production mm. report. But I just actually want to pick your brain on the PGM uh, space because, of course, we know that the woes uh, that the market was challenged with the last year. Uh, do you think at this point we have found a bottom in that market? I think so. I think the shares have bottomed out. Mm. You know, the platinum price and the palladium price have also seen a bottom. They seem to be going up. But they will follow the commodity cycle up or down. I think it's going to be a very strong year for commodities. And especially, not necessarily the PGM prices, but yeah. the PGM shares. Ah. I think it's going to be a fantastic year for them. Ah. So hopefully the cycle works as it has in the past. We get two or three bad years because of higher interest rates, and then we get two or three good years because of lower interest rates. And that's certainly how I see the future. Mm. Well, as I mean, we're talking about the PGM stocks uh, having had a torrid year in 2023. That was the same uh, for pick and pay. And actually, there was a sense that came out today that Sean Summers mm. is rejigging the, the senior leadership team. Of course, that's as he's still new in the role and returning. And I'm wondering what the confidence gauge is for pick and pay at this point. Look, ultimately, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. In other yeah. words, when they deliver profits, nice return on capital, when the business starts to go better. So obviously, Sean is now in there. He's changed management. As far as I could ascertain from reading the announcement, they all seem to be internal appointments, which mm -hmm. is, of course, a very good thing. You know, the people understand the business well. And all the senior appointments that were mentioned specifically are people who've been in the business a very, very long time. And, you know... Obviously, the market's still skeptical about this because we've got to see the results. I've been hearing about a pick-and-pay turnaround for 20 years. Mm. You know, we're still waiting.
Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Wayne, another interesting thing that happened, I mean, this was yesterday, um, HCI coming out with uh, an announcement saying that uh, one of its uh, holdings, Impact uh, Oil and Gas, is uh, partially selling um, some of its stake in, uh, in the Namibian oil fields to Total Energies. Mm -hmm. And what was actually confusing for market participants is that uh, the shares of HCI actually plummeted on the news, while the shares of Africa Oil, which is another major shareholder of Impact Oil and Gas, actually surged. What did you make of this? Look, I couldn't understand it either. I can't explain it. I'm also a bit baffled by it as to why the HCI price came down so much. Yeah. Um, look, HCI is a holding company, and it's not a huge trader. So maybe there was just really an... Uh, a Trade, people wanted to sell and get out, and mm. that was the price that was available. So I think to judge the impact on the share of this deal, we may have to wait a little while to get more stability in the share. But exactly the same as other participants, I certainly didn't expect the share price to plummet like it did. Yeah. All right. Well, Wayne, let us get to your stock pick for today. What will it be? Well, I'm going for Anglo-American Platinum. I mean, anglo Plats topped out a couple of years ago at, I think, 2,400 Rand, and it hit a low last year of 6.30 or 6.50. Literally, by the end of December, it was up almost at 1,000 again, and now it's back at 8.40, 8.50. So I think is it another opportunity to go in and buy these platinum shares? Because as I've said when you were talking about uh, Teresa, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very positive on platinum shares on a two- to three-year outlook. Uh, all right. Well, thank you so much for your time and giving us insights on what has been moving in the markets today. Uh, Wayne, that was Wayne McCurry from FNB Wealth and Investments.